Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. God is good. Hallelujah. It's another time for explore the word. Let's join in. Let's call our friends. It's another time for us to dig into the word of God. Brother Ezekiel, the Lord bless you. Dami Lola, the Lord bless you. Sister Ruth, the Lord bless you. Welcome to another evening in the presence of God where we dig deep into the word of God. Let's begin to call our friends. Let's invite our friends to join in. So we see the Lord bless you. Good evening. Shalom Abadeja. Good evening. The Lord bless you richly in Jesus name. It's another time for us to dig deep together, to get empowered through the word of God, to get energized. Ah, Shayi, bless you. Good evening. The Lord bless you richly in Jesus name. How was your day? I trust your day was great. I trust indeed the Lord moved mightily today. Kemi Kings, God bless you. Hansa Tuchidozie, good evening. The Lord bless you. Clementina Modupe Ojolua, God bless you. You're welcome. Let's share on our page so that we can invite as many people as possible. Let's share, let's share, let's share, let's share, let's share. For Lashade Oladapo, the Lord bless you richly in Jesus' name. I'm just waiting for uh, Instagram to connect with us. Okay, praise the Lord. Instagram is with us this evening. It's an awesome time this evening. I'm excited already, even though I'm missing Pastor. Um, Pastor is in Houston ministering. Um, he's been there for the past three days. Let's remember him in our prayers that the power of God will be greatly manifested through his ministrations in the mighty name of Jesus, that God will use him to do diverse miracles in the lives of people. You know, one of the prayer points I've been praying for pastor today and um, recently is that, you know, any ministration that pastor goes to minister, any church he goes to minister, that indeed unusual testimonies will come forth. So I just want us to remember him briefly that, Father Lord, as your servant is doing your work, as he's ministering all around the world, that indeed in every gathering that he ministers, there shall be unusual signs and wonders. Even as the Bible says, that signs and wonders will follow us, that men and women will testify to great move of God, even in all the meetings in Jesus' mighty name. Brother, to see the Lord bless you. Mama Leam, God bless you. Bola Tito Meadows, I celebrate you. God bless you richly in Jesus' name. Um, Shei, God bless you. Sintola, Debs, the Lord bless you. Hebziba, God bless you richly in Jesus' name. It's going to be an awesome time tonight because we started a series last week and we couldn't even cover half of it. And even today, I know we would not be able to cover a lot of it because it's going to go on for the next um, couple of weeks. But I trust God that indeed you're staying up to tune in, you're waking up to tune in, you're rushing home or whatever it is that you have sacrificed. It will not be a wasted time in Jesus' mighty name. God will speak to your circumstance, He will speak to your situation. He will cause there to arise in you a new determination to live a life that is pleasing to God in Jesus' mighty name. So let's just have a short word of prayer. Heavenly Father, I just thank you. For everyone that has tuned in even this evening, I pray in the name of Jesus that they will hear beyond my words. They will hear you speak. They will hear you, oh God Almighty, speak into their situation specifically in the name of Jesus. That indeed there will be a sent word for everyone that has tuned in today and even those that would watch later on. I pray in the name of Jesus that your power will be manifest even through this session in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you for taking absolute control. Thank you because your name and your name alone will be glorified. Remember, Pastor, even at this hour, that as he's ministering, indeed, Lord God Almighty, you grant unto him fresh unction. Let the heavens over the meeting be opened. To you be all the glory forever. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. God is good. Nis Oye. You're welcome, Rebecca Mazay. 
God bless you. I love your name. MZ Cozy. The Lord bless you richly in Jesus' name. So if we remember last week, we started a series called Success Kingdom Dimensions. You know, and um, when we started that series last week with Pastor here, we couldn't even really go into the deep nitty gritty of the whole thing because it is so loaded. And the more we study it, the more we find out that there's so much about this particular um, topic that we'll, um, we'll be sharing for the next couple of weeks. So make sure that you always have your pen and your paper. And after every session, make sure that you're determined to do the things that we talk about. So we're not just hearing, we're not just hearers of the word, but we're also doers in Jesus' mighty name. And I pray that God will give us the grace that even in this year, we will begin to manifest the power, you know, and the awesome glory that God has deposited inside of us. You know, that we will not walk as ordinary anymore because the success, the kingdom dimension is talking about the supernatural life that God has birthed us into as children of God. The moment you give your life to Christ, your life is no longer ordinary. You're no longer um, Bola, you're no longer being paid, you're no longer Peter. God, you are not surnamed with the name of Jesus. And because of that, there's extreme power. And that's what the Bible says that greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. So you're no longer ordinary. Your your visage has not changed. You've not grown taller or lighter or shorter or darker. But it's something that is birthed on your inside. You are no longer the same person anymore. God, the creator of the entire universe, now resides inside of you. So you are no longer ordinary. So the things that befall others, the things that hold others, others captive, the things that restrict them, the things that make them give up, we should not give up. And so we said success, the kingdom dimension, one of the nuggets, one of the the, the principles about this kind of success we're talking about. We're not talking about the worldly success. You know, the worldly success, you know, says a person that has achieved his dreams or has achieved um, prosperity or has achieved a particular status in, in society. When people see that kind of person, they say that person is successful. But the kind of success we're talking about as children of God is the kind of success that is stated in jo Joshua chapter 1 verse 8, where the Bible says that this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein for then thou shalt make thy way prosperous and then thou shalt have good success so we're talking about good success, not success as the world defines it, not success that, that can be gotten through ill-gotten Ill means, whereby we don't know what the person is doing, but all of a sudden we see him riding a Range Rover and everybody's hailing him, or, or all of a sudden he begins to squander money anyhow, and people are hailing him and they say he's successful. That's not the kind of success we're talking about. We're talking about the success that the Bible calls good success. The success that Jehovah God gives. The success that is what is kingdom minded. The success that is driven by the things that the kingdom dictates. We're talking about that kind of success. The success that the world cannot take away because the world did not give it to you. The success that only Jehovah God gives. And that kind of success increases, multiplies and enlarges because it is given by God. The Bible says it's the one that opens a door that no man can shut. So when God opens a door of success unto you as his child, nobody can close it. Nobody can stop it. When God decides that that flood comes into your life, the flood of his success, the flood of his prosperity, nobody can close it. So if you tuned in for nuggets about how to be successful so that you can buy the latest Range Rover or you can carry designer bags or you can carry... I'm sorry, you've tuned into the wrong um, episode because that's not what we're talking about. Because in the grand scheme of things, that does not matter. The number of cars you ride, the number of clothes you have, the number of houses you build, you know, um, if you're flying first class or business class, in the grand scheme of things, it does not matter at all. The Bible says, what does it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul? So that's not what we're talking about today. We're talking about what kingdom dimension of success. Not the kind of success that I just want to have money so I can boast. So that when I come into a place and I come in, everybody stands up and everybody's looking at me and they're in awe of me and I can walk in a certain way or I, I can sit in a particular kind of place and everybody wants to be like me. No. We're talking of the unselfish kind of success whereby your desires are governed by kingdom initiatives. 
whereby you are saying, God, if you will give me a million dollars today, I will build you churches. Lord, if you would give me a million dollars today, I would clothe the needy. Lord, I will feed the hungry. Lord, widows will go to bed and they will be praising God that I came into their lives. That's a kind of kingdom um, dimension of success that we're talking about this evening. And last week we started... And our theme, our, our key scripture is Matthew chapter 6, and from verse 25 to verse 34. And I'll just read it again, just for some of us that maybe were not um, here last week. And then even those of us that were here last week, let's read it again to kind of like refresh ourselves. And so we said, Matthew 6, from verse 25 to 34, and I read, Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what you shall eat or what you shall drink, nor yet for your body what you shall put on. Is not the life more than meat and the body than raiment? Behold, the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into bonds. Yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are you not much better than they? Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit unto his stature? And why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow, they toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you, that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of this. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is, and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Wherefore, take no thought, saying, What shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or wherewithal shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that you have need of all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. Praise the Lord. And that was our text um, last week, and that's the text we're still continuing with this week. And you know, we were really hammering on verse 32 and 33 that says, look, the Gentiles, they seek for what they will eat, what they will drink, or what they will wear. But we, we, that is not what we seek after. That is not our priority. God knows we need those things. But our priority should be what? The kingdom. When you seek first the kingdom and his righteousness, the Bible says all these things, what you would wear, what you would drink, what, what you would eat, God will add it unto you because he knows you need it. You need to eat to survive. You need to be clothed. You need to cover your nakedness. You know, you need to drink. But once the kingdom is your priority, once the kingdom mandate, the advancement of the kingdom is your priority, how you can promote the kingdom, how your choices are governed by the kingdom, you know, your associations, your kingdom minded, the business that you want to go into is a kingdom minded business. God says, I will add all these things to you. And so last week we said, you know, we talked about the three A's. And I'll quickly recap and then just add a, a bit of some things to those three A's. You know, the Bible says, oh, I'm sorry, we said the first A is that we should acknowledge and appreciate God. Acknowledge and appreciate God's divine intervention. Because as children of God, because we walk in the supernatural, we understand that our life is not ordinary. And so we must acknowledge and we must appreciate God for his divine intervention in our lives. So that means that in my work, you know, in my business, in, in my marriage, I expect God to divinely intervene in every situation and every circumstance of my life. As long as I am kingdom minded, as long as I allow my desires and that which I want, my choices to be governed by the kingdom, God will divinely intervene in every aspect of our lives. The moment you give your life to Christ, you said you must acknowledge that, look, I am no longer ordinary. My lineage, my primary source is God and not my parents. So that means that even if my family, you know, um, there's hypertension running in the, in the lineage of my family or there's diabetes running in the lineage of my family, the moment I become born again, I become an exemption to that rule. So I am separated from that which normally plagues my lineage. So you must acknowledge that I am no longer the same. The moment I gave my life to Christ, I acknowledge that I'm a different person. I acknowledge that that which afflicts people in my in my in my in, in my hometown or in my family you know or people of my age or whatever will not afflict me 
So that means that even if I've been trusting God for the fruit of the womb and I believe God that everybody that tunes into this broadcast this year your time of waiting has expired in jesus name whether you have been waiting on the lord for a life partner or you're waiting on the lord for for your child or you're waiting on the lord for your breakthrough permit me to prophesy to you this evening that your wait is over in jesus name because the god that we serve the god that specializes in divinely intervening will intervene in your circumstance and your situation in jesus mighty name you are not ordinary you know, so the Bible tells us that, look, we are in this world, but we are not of this world. So because I'm not of this world, the things that afflict the people of this world should not afflict me. And we looked at, you know, Luke 3, um, verse 38, that talked about the genealogy and ended with the fact that Adam, Adam is the son of God. So our primary source is God. You know, so we must, number one, acknowledge and appreciate God's divine intervention. So even when you say, look, when everybody's saying that, look, there's a pulling, and that's what the Bible says, for me it's a lifting. So when people are saying, ah, the days are bad. No, the days are not bad for me. The days are good for me. Because the Bible says all things are working together for our good. So even if today was a bit challenging, even if yesterday was a bit challenging, because I understand that my primary source is God, I'm not going to be moved by what I see. My reality is not what is happening. My reality is governed by the word of God. So number one, we acknowledge, the A is acknowledge and appreciate. How do we appreciate God? You know, we, we, we said that, look, we must appreciate him in the place of worship. A lot of times, many of us believe that, look, God needs my worship. God does not need your worship. You are the one that needs to worship God. Let me say it again. God does not need your worship. You worshiping God does not make him bigger, does not make him more powerful, does not make him greater, does not make him mightier. You are the one that needs to worship God. Because when you stay in the place of worship, appreciating God, you begin to experience God in a new dimension. When you worship God, God is magnified. And in the place of worship, fear is not allowed to have the final say in your life. Let me say it again. Type it there. In the place of worship, as I worship God, fear is not allowed to have the final say in my life. Because worship enlarges my capacity to experience and to understand God. When you stay in the place of worship, it enlarges your capacity to experience God. So the more we worship God, the more the capacity to experience Him in our lives. So please, when you are worshiping God, it's not God that needs it. You are the one that needs it. I worship God so that I can retain a sense of wonder. Hallelujah. The more you worship God, the more you retain a sense of what, what an awesome God you are. What a great God you are. What a mighty God you are. The more you worship him, the more you reverence him, the more you become less self-reliant and less independent. You become solely dependent on him. You become less self-reliant and the more we worship God, the more we grow in love with him. The more we grow in love with him, worship makes us mindful and we're no longer mindless. So you become more conscious of God in your day-to-day -day work, when you're going out, when you're coming in. You know, um, last year when we were talking and we kind of like delved into worship again, every time that we do a study here, let me let you know that it's not we, we don't study the Bible so that we can preach it. We study the Bible so that we can learn more about God. And it is in our study that we come to share and explore the word. And so whenever we study, we also are learning because God is teaching us also. You know, God is teaching Pastor and I new things and we begin to imbibe it into our lives. You know, so when we talked about, you know, last year we talked about Thanksgiving and, you know, worship, you know, and I started, you know, really immersing myself in that, in that worship of God. Really being so conscious, you know, if, if I'm going out on the road, you know, I'm driving and I look at the sky and I just get amazed, you know, maybe it's a sunset I see and in that I just begin to worship him. You know, that we become so mindful of God in our every second of our lives. Not just when we wake up in the morning and pray, and then in the night when you go back to pray. We must make sure that worship is a lifestyle. So I'm carrying him wherever I go. You know, so I'm worshiping even if as I'm sitting down to eat. 
I'm worshiping him even as I'm driving on the street. I'm worshiping even as I'm getting my children ready for school. It becomes, it, please, I encourage us, make worship a lifestyle. You find out that, look, the challenges of life, you know, the situations that plague you, they would not be able to dampen your spirit. You know, even when things don't go the way you thought you planned, because you have created such an atmosphere of worship around you, that you are so immersed in worship, you are not pulled down by that. Somehow you can see that God is still at work and he's, with, he's there with you. I mean, today is not a teaching on worship. Don't get me, let me not get lost. But, you know, please, let's begin to get so mindful of God. So mindful of our Father, Lord, I thank you. You know, there's something I began to pray about now when I worship God in the morning. I've said, Lord, I thank you that I woke up this morning still as a wife. You know, it's not something to take for granted. That you woke up this morning and you're still a husband if you're married. There are many people that became widows overnight. I was privileged to go and minister in Milton Keynes, you know, to, to a gathering of women, you know, who were widows or single mothers. And my heart almost broke into pieces when I heard a lot of their stories. There was a particular lady that her husband went to the grocery store and he didn't come back. He had an accident and he died and she was pregnant. And she was planning a surprise party for him. He went out to the grocery store and he didn't come back. So that you woke up this morning and you woke up still as a wife or as a husband. You woke up still as a mother. There are people that their children die overnight. There's so much that we, when I start on worship, I don't finish. Let me continue. Sorry. Praise the Lord. So we said, I appreciate and acknowledge God. Appreciate and acknowledge his divine intervention in our lives. And the second thing that we said is that you must do what? You must ask for it. Make a demand. Make a demand that God, I want to see you divinely intervene in my marriage. I want to see you divinely intervene concerning my career. I want to see you divinely intervene concerning my business. When you ask God for it, one idea from God can settle your generation forever. God giving you one business idea can settle everything concerning, you know, your finances. And that's why we're talking about the kingdom dimension. If you know that, Lord, wait, just prosper me and I will use it to propagate your kingdom. Prosper me, Lord, that there will be nobody around me that will be hungry. Prosper me, Lord, that there will be no widow that will be in want. Prosper me, Lord, that Lord God, there will be no hungry child around me. I will not be empowered and be selfish. I will not be empowered so that I will keep it to myself. Remember, it's a kingdom dimension of success we're talking about. That is the kind of success that God gives. When he sees you that indeed you will be faithful to do that which he commands, God will bless the work of your hand. You will find out that new ideas will begin to come into your mind. Look at Joseph. Joseph was there. When God knew that he could trust him with kingdom dimension of success, God called him out of the prison with just one interpretation of a dream. Just one. That brought him, I mean, to the presence of, of, of the king. Because remember, he interpreted the dream of the butler and interpreted the dream of the baker. But the dream of the baker, I mean, went with him because the baker died. It was the interpretation of the dream of the butler that brought him to the presence of the king. Just one interpretation of a dream. And that settled the lineage of Joseph forever. His family was, they were wallowing in famine. But because God blessed Joseph, he was able to bring his family out of destruction, bring them out of ruin, bring them out of imminent death. Because God gave him one interpretation. All you need is just one, one from God. And your family, your lineage is settled forever. Hey, God is still giving out new ideas. God is still giving out new, new dimensions of, of business, of, of career, of new... Oh, ask! Let's make a demand of the power of God that is available. Ask! And God will give it to us in Jesus' mighty name. Let's ask God. Let's ask God. Reveal to me. Understand the power that God has given to you in the place of prayer. Be open to divine intervention. You know, look for it. But today we're going to spend a lot of time on the third A, which is act on it. 
it's not enough for you to acknowledge that God will divine intervene and appreciate him for that intervention in the place of worship, you know, that, that and that strategically positions you, you know, you ask for it. That means you are intentionally seeking for it. Lord, I want you to bless me, oh God. Lord, I want you to indeed equip me with that which I need that will blow me up into a new dimension of prosperity that my lineage, that my family, that, you know, my, my, my genealogy, they have never ever seen. My nation has not seen. Womanhood has not seen. You know, but it's not enough for us to do that. We must act on it. A lot of times we pray, but we don't step out in faith. You know, last week we were talking about, you know, Peter, that look, he stepped out of the boat. You know, he said, Lord, bid me to come. If it is you, Lord God Almighty, bid me to come. And the Bible says, Jesus said, come. And he came. He came on that word. You know, the other starts in the boat, but he came. And we know that last week we talked about the fact that, look, that um, pastor said, you know, that we should not put labor ahead of grace. You know, but once you have received that grace, step out sometimes we spend the whole year you know, the month is already rounding up now you know and you've written i trust that you've written your aspirations for the year what have you started doing what have you stepped out in faith to begin to do you know and i began to imagine when peter start, stepped out you know on the water you know and i began to imagine the fact that his steps would have been wobbly at first you can imagine I mean, I don't know, I'm just imagining, you know, that you're stepping out in, on, on, on water and the waves are still, you know, moving around and all that, you know. Sometimes because we want to get it perfect, fear keeps us back in the boat. Your steps do not have to be perfect when you're walking on water. Just walk. Don't say, hey, I want to know the 20 principles of how to get this thing. I don't know. No, 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 no. That will keep you back. You know, remember when you look at a child, when a child wants to learn how to start walking, the child doesn't sit down, you know, at age one and says, okay, how do I ensure that my steps go in front of each other appropriately, accurately? How do I ensure that I don't miss my step? The child just starts walking. And as the child begins to walk, the steps get perfect. So the child begins to walk perfectly. And then the way the child was walking at 11 months changes by the time the child is a year and the child is a year, um, you know, two years old. And now, I mean, look at us as adults. We're working perfectly. So my word to you, and this is a specific word for somebody, get out and begin to walk. Don't wait until it is perfect. Don't wait until you feel that your steps are perfect. You'll be wrong. You see, because the thing is, is when God calls you, he empowers you. So when God calls you to step out of the boat and step into the water as you're acting or out on faith, God will equip you to walk. As long as you remain focused, remember, seek ye first the kingdom of God. As long as you remain focused that the reason why I want to be successful, Lord, and if you know that maybe that is not your desire, ask God, Father, put it in me. Put the right desire. You know, the Bible talks in Psalm. It says, create in me, in Psalm 51, you know, verse 10. It says, create in me a clean heart and renew a right spirit in me. But eventually, my, my motives right now are not kingdom-minded. Lord, I might not have the kingdom, you know, minded kind of um, desire right now. I just want to have that money. Lord, the suffering is enough. I don't want people disgracing me. I don't want this begging. I don't want this embarrassment. I understand you're human. But now as you hear this word, change your perception your reason for wanting to be successful because that is the success that you know that god will give and god will back up and god will protect and god will ensure that it will outlive you you hear of a lot of successful people that were rich and then when they died you know their children squandered the their, the money and we really we don't even know especially we in africa our our prosperity is usually doesn't outlive us once the father dies we don't hear about it again we know so many the children just sell all the properties and there's nothing at the end of the day that's not the kind of success we're talking about today so act on it step out of the water it's not about the quality of the steps it's about the quantity 
The more you step, the better it gets. So don't be conscious about, oh, I, I just have to be perfect. No, 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 no. Step out. As you are walking, God will begin to perfect it. Praise the Lord. Now, and somebody asked a question. I, I can't remember exactly how the question was last week. And it was towards the tail end and we couldn't really um, answer the question. But the next point I'm going to share, I hope would kind of like answer that question. But if it doesn't, please write it again. Because I remember that there was any person that, no, I mean, this person didn't get it right. Now, the fact that I'm acting on God's word, the fact that I'm acting on God kingdom principles, the fact that I'm kingdom minded, does it mean that I would be automatically successful? You know, because sometimes we say, okay, Lord, I'm not going to take bribe. Okay, Lord, I've said I'm not going to take bribe. I'm not going to sleep my way to success. Lord, I'm not going to bribe my way to success. Lord, I'm not going to conform to the world. I'm not going to do business the way the world is doing. I'm not going to do my career the way they are doing, you know. And you expect that God will reward you instantly. I'm sorry, I'm going to bust your bubble. It doesn't happen like that all the time. There are times that you make all those right decisions, that you sacrifice, that you do all that is right, that you walk, you know, being governed by the word, you know, whether it is about marriage, you know, you refuse to compromise. I'm not going to sleep around, you know, I'm not going to um, break somebody's homes. I'm not going to get married to a married man. And you are, you are 40 you're 42 and you are still not married and you're thinking to yourself so why did i do all that people that are conforming people that are compromising they're going ahead you know they're getting blessed they're, 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 they're getting prosperous people are celebrating them no don't be moved by that kingdom principles are totally different let's open our bibles to the book of mark 8 and I want us to look at the story of a blind man. Praise the Lord. If you're understanding me, can I just see your thumbs up? Can I see your love sign? So I know that you're getting what I'm sharing today. Praise the Lord. You know, sometimes you just want to know that people are receiving that which you're hearing. So can I see your thumb sign? Can I see your heart? That indeed you're receiving the word and it's making sense. And please also remember that you can put up your questions. So if there's anything that I've said that you don't understand, you don't agree with, please feel free to write your questions. Praise the Lord. Now, the book of Mark chapter 8, and I want us to read from verse 22. Now, we know that when Jesus was on earth, Jesus healed many blind people. You know, and when I was studying the word, I found out that the category of people that Jesus healed the most were the blind people. Because God will only work with sighted people. God will always ask you, what do you see? What do you see about yourself? What do you see about your situation? What do you see about your circumstance? What do you see about your marriage? What do you see about your future? God will only work with people who are sighted. So the category of people that God healed the most in scriptures were the blind people. And like for me, that's my, my own explanation because God will only work with people that are sighted. We're talking about, you know, spiritual sight now, not just physical. So let's open our Bibles to Mark 8 verse 22. And I read, it says, And he come to bedside and they bring a blind man unto him and besought him to touch him. And he took the blind man by the hand and led him out of the town. And when he had spit on his eyes and put his hands upon him, he asked him if he saw odd. And he looked up and said, I see men as trees walking. After that, he put his hands again upon his eyes and made him look up and he was restored and saw every man clearly. Verse 26, and he sent him away to his house saying, neither go into the town nor tell it to any in the town. Praise the Lord. The Bible said they brought a blind man to Jesus for Jesus to restore his sight. They brought the blind man for Jesus to touch because they knew that all the man needed was a touch from God. You know, once God touches you, you are, Jesus touches you, you are healed. So you can imagine their wonder. When rather than Jesus touching this man, Jesus took him by the hand and took him on a journey. Jesus, what I have come to meet you for is for healing. Why are you now carrying me out of the town? The Bible talks about Jesus healing various people. In Mark chapter 10, verse 46, the Bible says, And they brought unto him the blind and the lame, and he healed them all. We didn't even hear how he healed them. He healed them all. No drama, no episode, no nothing. You know, we you know the story of blind Bartimaeus. He cried unto the Lord. He stood up. He got healed. No drama. 
But look at this man in Mark chapter 8, verse 22. The same issue, but different methodology. And that is why you can't put God in a box. You can't say, Lord, but this person too that said uh, she, um, she, she, she did not compromise. You made her business prosper within a year. I have been waiting on you for four years. God is not a God that you can put him in the box and say, this is the method of which God will use to give you your own kingdom, you know, success. No, 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 no. You can't put him in a box. You can't say this is the way he's going to do it. And that is why whenever Jesus would heal people, he would heal them in diverse ways. He would tell the man that this hand is withered, stand here and begin to address the Pharisees before he would turn to him and say, stretch forth your hand. To another person, he would come and meet, meet the man, you know, at the pool of Bethesda and say, look, carry your mat. So there is no way, you can't put God in a box and say, Lord, because I have done it this way. So therefore, within a year, you know, you should answer me. Within two months, you should answer me. You should, yes, we should expect God to answer, but I'm saying you cannot determine how god will touch you or how god will bring about your success or how god will will, will turn that situation around. but it is of a definite assurance that yes god will divinely intervene but how he will do it the onus lies with him so the bible says and god took him out a lot of us this year god needs to take you out before he can establish that which he needs to establish. God needed to take him out of where the naysayers were. God needed to take him out of where people could distract him. God needed to take him out of his comfort zone. For him, it was like him walking on his own water. God needed to take him out. The Bible said, God, now you can imagine a blind man. He can't walk unaided. You know, so definitely his steps would be restricted. There are places that he would go to because people would have to take him to those places. So he didn't have the free will to just go anywhere. God knows maybe whether he has even gone out of town before. But God was in, in, in some way asking him, it's time for you to walk on water. But be assured I am with you. And God is trying to assure somebody today that once you take that action, step out into the water, God is with you. He said, no, I am with you always, even until the end of age. So I'm with you. As, as you step out in faith, as you step out in boldness, as you step out confident that I can do it, I am with you. And so don't look at anybody and don't compare. This is not the year to compare. And say, but I did, not, I did not take bribe, Lord. I did not do this. I did not do that. I remember a friend of mine who used to work in the bank. And, you know, when every other person was, you know, advancing and taking kickbacks and doing all sorts of things, you know, she refused to do any of it. You know, and people thought she was stupid because, of course, she was not advancing the way she ought to advance, you know, and things were not... But when it was time for the bank to open up a branch where they needed somebody to head, years later, I'm talking about maybe like about six or seven years later, she was the one that the boss nominated and she was the one that became the head. Now those ones that had compromised over the years, that it seemed as if they had gone ahead of her, she now became their boss. But it took years. It took years of God taking her out. On her own journey so permit me i'm not i'm not a prophet of doom this evening but i want you to understand that you can't use any other person's life as your own yardstick to say because i did not compromise lord he says yes he's a rewarder of those that diligently seek him he will reward you but it must not be imminent it must not be the way others are and so god took him out and when jesus took him out and Jesus touched him the first time, spitting on him, putting mud on him, you know. He said, what do you see? You know, and if you look at that passage very well, Jesus normally doesn't ask questions after he does his healing. He doesn't ask questions. Because he knows that once he's done it, it is done. But when God asks you a question, when Jesus asks a question, it's because he wants to bring something to the forefront. He wants us to understand something here. And the Bible says, the man said, I see men walking as streets. Now look at that in two dimensions. Now this is somebody that has been blind. You know, if you are some of us, I mean, even me myself, I might say, at least I can't see. Let me, just, let me just accept I can't see. But God is saying, I don't want you to settle for half measure. 
the kind of success that God is going to give you this year, going to give us this year, is not the one that, okay, management success. If you are looking for the kind of success that, okay, so I can pay my bills on time, so I can build one house, so I can buy a car, that's not the kind of success we're talking about. A success whereby you are, have, you are, you are a divine treasurer. Whereby they want to, you know, do crusades and you just say, Pastor, please, there's some things I don't want you to be announcing in church anymore. When you want to do crusade, it's me. I don't know how many of you are like me. I receive that, Lord. You know, when God wants to do crusade, I, I, those, are, those are my prayer points. Pastor and I have, you know, a list of, and by the end of this meeting, I want us to have those, those, those kind of kingdom desires that you want to use your money to do. That, Lord God Almighty, I will build churches for you. You know, Lord, I will feed, you know, we, we have a charity whereby we feed children in some government schools in Lagos. You know, and it breaks my heart when some other schools come to meet us and they say, they have students that don't eat, and we say, I'm sorry, we don't have enough resources. You know, part of my, my desire this year that Lord, we will not turn anybody back. Any school that says we have children that don't eat, that can you come and feed them? We'll be able to say, Yes, bring them. How many? How many in their thousands? You know, that is what I want to use money to do to feed the hungry, to establish churches, you know, to, to organize crusades that souls will be won unto Christ. That I can buy all sorts of, um, um, of large screens with, with, with projectors and we can show films about Jesus in the villages and people can come and give their lives to Christ. If that is the kind of success you are looking for, can I see your amen? Can I see your amen? That Lord, I want you to see me as a vessel that you will use for kingdom initiatives. And God is ready to invest in you. Can I see your amen? Can I see your amen? Not just your life. Amen means so shall it be. That God will indeed bless you with those kind of resources. In the mighty you name of Jesus Christ. So Jesus touched him the first time. He saw men walking on streets. And then Jesus touched him the second time. And he saw men walking as men. For some of us, it might not be perfect the first time. But just keep on walking with God. Just keep on trusting God. You know, you want to go into ministry and you're like, the first meeting was not so good. I organized this and it didn't come out the way I want. Just keep at it. The second time will be better. God wants to reassure you with this man's life that even though it was not great the first time, it was not perfect. You didn't see men walking as men. You saw men walking as trees. It didn't work out perfectly. All you need is a second touch. And that's why I say ask. Lord, it's not working out the way I thought it would work out. Oh, cry unto him. He touches you again. This year, we must be real with God. Enough of fake Christianity. Enough of... Uh, I have a, a wonderful sister, you know. Uh, when I call and I ask her, how are you? She to ask her, she say, do you want the King James Version or do you want the real version? The real version is, I'm very stressed up right now. Things are not going very well. But if you want the King James Version, it is well in Jesus' name. And I'll tell her, no, I don't want the King James Version. I want the real version so that we can address the issues. This year, God does not want you to talk to him in the King James Version. Let him know that there are some things that still need to be dealt with. You see, when God was taking this man out on the journey, God wanted some things to be dealt with in his life. There are some things that need to be dealt with in your life before God can put in your hands the kind of success you are trusting him for. Some of us, God needs to take us on that journey whereby we will shed away pride. We will take away comparison. You know, God will, as we're going on that journey with him, as we're going out, you know, he's taking you out. Taking you out of, you know, those things that you hold on to. That, ah, and if they don't um, acknowledge me, I feel somehow. If they don't, can you come? All those things that God knows that if I give you the kind of success that you want, you will make a disaster of your life. So God wants you to be so real that, Lord, I've been born again for 10 years, but I'm still battling with lustful thoughts. I've been born again for so long. I'm married, but I still desire other women. You know, I still have, you know, 
desires to want to change the books when it comes to fine i have challenges with, with 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 being accountable in the area of finances if they put money in my hand the temptation is always so great for me to put my hand in the pocket like judas in the in the bag like judas that there's some things in my life even though i'm a minister yes even though i've been born again for so many years but lord there's still some issues that need to be dealt with lord take me on that journey out because that man needed that journey he couldn't retain his own healing if he was just touched once there were some things that needed to be dealt with and by the time he went out when jesus touched him the first time he was able to be real with god i can't see but i'm not seeing well i need you to touch me again some of us need to go on that journey so that we can be so real and transparent with god that Lord God Almighty, people see me on the outside and they think I'm all that as a child of God, I'm all that as a Christian, but Lord, there's still some things that need to be dealt with. I know, you know, I always tell God when I pray with him, I say, Lord, you know me, so there's no reason for me to come and form with you when I'm praying. There's no need for me to begin to, you know, do as if I'm too, too spiritual. Lord, you know my inadequacies. You know my weaknesses. You know the areas of my life that need to be dealt with. Lord, deal with them. Open yourself up. Open yourself up as you're acting on it, you know, and God will indeed bless us in Jesus' mighty name. So the second point, the first point is what we dealt with, the three A's. Acknowledge and appreciate, ask him and ask on it the second point is service if you are looking onto god for the kingdom dimension kind of success the second thing that you need to do this year is service and we're not talking about you know eye service because a lot of people you know pretend to serve god you and i don't really understand it why you you you, you are shaking for a man a man that is nothing but a man. A man that can sleep tonight and will not wake up tomorrow. If God says that is the case. But you are seeking for man's accolade. You are seeking to please a man. You know. Or a woman as the case may be. Rather than wanting to please God. And sometimes you please man at the expense of pleasing God. We have become men pleasers in church. And it's sometimes so disheartening. When we see how much servitude we give unto man and we don't even give that to our heavenly father when we're shaking to be in the in the cl cloud you know in the crowd of the people that are the inner caucus of one pastor or another i'm a pastor and i'm not trying to put down any pastor please but i find out that men are beginning to lose sight of our god and then we are shaking to please man. We are shaking to serve man. Yes, you serve men because they are representatives of God. But you don't serve them at the expense of serving the God that you are supposed to serve. I want us to quickly look at the book of Luke chapter 10 verse 40. Please don't shake for any man. Don't shake for any man of God. Your life is not in the hand of any man of God or any woman of God. Your life is in the hands of God. Stop becoming, you know, a servant a, because you are trying to, you know, you, you, you are trying to, to please any man that you won't lose your own identity. I beg you in the name of God. No man is worth your worship. God is the only one that deserves the worship. Only God. And we look at the book of Luke chapter 10. We're talking about service service unto god service unto god luke chapter 10 and we're looking at verse 40. we're talking about mary and martha you know the bible says let me start from verse 8 38 sorry now it came to pass as they went that he entered into a certain village and a certain woman named martha received him into her house and she had a sister called mary which also sat at jesus's feet and heard his word but martha was cumbered about much serving and came to him and said lord does thou not care 
that my sister has left me to serve alone. Bid her therefore that she help me. And Jesus answered and said unto her, Martha, Martha, thou art careful and troubled about many things, but one thing is needful, and Mary has chosen that good part, which shall not be taken away from her. Praise the Lord. In this story, I mean, all of us know the story of Mary and Martha. You know, Jesus comes into their house. And you know that whenever Jesus goes anywhere, there's a crowd that follows Jesus. You know, we know the story of the, of the, the man that was sick with the palsy. You know, and Jesus was in a particular house. And the man that was sick in a, with the palsy, these four friends brought him there. But they couldn't enter the house because of the crowd. And even the crowd blocked the entrance. And so what did they do? They broke the man's roof to bring Jesus down into the house. So we know the kind of crowd that follows Jesus wherever, you know, Jesus goes to. So we know that Martha must have been such a hospitable woman to allow Jesus and his crowd to come into her house. So this is a wonderful woman, a woman that loves God and loves everything that God comes about with, you know, being a child of God and you loving and serving God. So she opened her house to Jesus and to the crowd, not bothering about whether they were dirty or clean or, 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 or rich or poor. She was indiscriminate and she opened her house. So she was serving the Lord by her accepting Jesus to come in. So Mary and Martha both served, but Martha was serving people rather than serving Jesus. And so because she was serving people at the expense of serving, because the people that came were Jesus' crowd, but because she was serving people at the expense of serving God, the Bible says that she was encumbered. And that is why a lot of you get disgruntled. And you move from church to church. That pastor doesn't even appreciate me. After all the money I gave to him. After all the service I rendered. After the way I would drive him. After the way I would go and um, give out um, tracts. After the way. And you keep on mumbling and murmuring and complaining. And that was what Martha did here. She was busy serving. It was a good thing to serve people to eat. But can you imagine? How many times do you get the king of kings and the lord of lords to come into your house? And instead of you to sit at his feet, to serve him, to serve him in the place of worship, to serve him in the place of saying, Lord, pour into me. Let me serve you. Let me wait at your feet. She was busy serving man. And a lot of us are caught in that trap. Whereby you don't even have a personal relationship with God. Men are hailing you. Men are acknowledging you that you are the closest person to pastor. You are the king. But you know that your personal life is suffering. That you don't have personal quality closet life with the master. Because you are serving man at the expense of serving God. If you are that person today, please change. And it doesn't matter what men will say because they will talk. But you know at the end of the day, nobody will sign certificate for you to make heaven know. I repeat, nobody. There's nobody that would say, oh, I will give you recommendation for heaven. Nobody. So it is left for you to ensure that your service is unto God. And the service that you're rendering is not at the expense of you serving God. And that is why a lot of us, you know, you're an usher in church, but you are the most annoying usher because you have not spent time to serve the one who will give you the grace not to murmur and not to complain. If Martha had spent time serving Jesus, she wouldn't even look at Mary. And that's why a lot of us are busy comparing because you have not spent time to worship, to serve the one you're supposed to serve. That is Jesus. I'm not saying don't serve your pastors. Please, don't get me wrong. Don't misquote me. But it must not be at the expense of you serving Jesus. When your service unto your man of God is, is priority to your spending time to hear from God, there's a problem. Whereby you, you know <laughs> that the accolade you receive from man is not the accolade that Jehovah God is giving you in heaven. That heaven is not clapping and saying, well done. Like over Jesus, when Jesus came out of the water, the Bible said, this is my beloved son. Is heaven saying that about you? Or is only man that is saying that about you? 
Is heaven saying, this is my beloved daughter in whom I am well pleased? May God help us in Jesus' name. Our service that would be rewarded, our service unto God must be without complaint, must be without expecting accolade, must not be to please man. So I'm giving a check. I'm, I'm sowing into the church. Not so that pastor will reward me and make me a minister. Not so that pastor will reward me and announce me as the head of the committee. I'm giving it unto God. I don't even need to go and let pastor know I've given this money. I remember I knew a lady. If you ask her to do anything in church, you know, that is anonymous. And she was very, very wealthy. She would not do it. But if I tell her that, oh, pastor is going to acknowledge the people that do, she'll be the first to give. And unfortunately for such a person, the reward is here on earth. It's not heavenly. Because you have already received the reward. The service that God rewards is the service that is done with joy. So this year, serve God with joy. Serve him with all your heart. You know, don't they, you know how many hours it took me to come to Kinnikon? You know how many Kinnikon? And upon that point, Pastor did not even call me. Pastor did not even appreciate me. Pastor did not acknowledge me. This year, no. Because, you know, we're looking unto God for the kingdom dimension kind of success. So my service is not so that man will acknowledge me. My service is not so that man will praise me. My service is so that God will indeed acknowledge and he that acknowledges me he knows how to reward amen so please our service this year will be rewarded because we're serving god in spirit and in truth i know a lot of churches right now are fasting and and we're praying and so even that which we're doing right now is a service we're serving god with our prayers and fasting i want to encourage us even in this season that we're not only fasting but we're praying because god is not moved by our fast he's moved by our prayers i pray that god will give us grace even to serve him in spirit and in truth that indeed as he has proposed to prosper us the bible says he wishes above all things that we might prosper and be in good health always even as our soul prosper it, that that will be our testimony in Jesus' mighty name. I want you to expect big. I want you to think big. I want you to believe God for big things. This is our year. This is the year that there will be a transference of wealth from the unbelievers to the believers, from the Gentiles to us who are the spiritual Jews. And so I want you to expect that God will divinely intervene, not just in your financial life, but also in your marital life and in every area of your life that you are believing God for divine intervention. Permit me to prophesy that indeed this week, the remaining part of this week, you will testify to God divinely intervening in your circumstance and situation in Jesus' mighty name. I want to end with this testimony. Um, last week, you know, I woke up in the night to pray. And when I woke up, a sister's, you know, her name just came into my spirit. I didn't know why, you know, I didn't know what. And I just took my phone and I sent her a text and I said, may you be pleasantly surprised today in Jesus' name. Amen. And I just left it, you know, and I went about, you know, praying, studying the word and I forgot about it. You know, later on in the day, because it was about 3 a.m. that I sent her the text, about 9 o'clock in the morning, you know, she sent me a voice message and she was just weeping and she was just saying, ah, you don't know what you, that prayer. And I thought, it was just a sentence, may you be pleasantly surprised, you know, today in Jesus' name. And she began to cry and said, I you don't know how much I needed that, blah, 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 blah. You know, and I said, praise God, I'm so thankful to God that that made sense to you. And I just, you know, I didn't know why. And I just left it at that. You know, and then two days after, she sent me an, an amazing text. And she said, yay. And she had all these emojis screaming in the, uh, you know, in the text. I said, indeed, I have been pleasantly surprised. And I said, amen. So permit me to release that upon you today in Jesus' name. That for the rest of this week, may you be pleasantly surprised in Jesus' name. May doors that you did not imagine could open, may they open unto you in Jesus' mighty name. May you receive emails, mails that will pleasantly surprise you. May you receive messages of pleasant surprises in the name of Jesus concerning your career, concerning your business, concerning your family, concerning your health. Yes, Lord. God is speaking to somebody's health right now. You'll be pleasantly surprised by the new 
results that you receive concerning your health in the mighty name of jesus the rest of this week shall be a week of pleasant surprises for you the lord bless you richly as you expect it and as you receive it and as you act on this word in jesus mighty name amen the lord bless you richly I celebrate you all. Thank you so much for the privilege of coming into your homes and coming into your, 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 your lives. And I pray that indeed the Lord will continually increase his word in our hearts and our love for his word. That on a daily basis as we immerse ourselves in the word of God, God will increase our capacity to become more kingdom minded and to indeed seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, knowing of a certainty that every other thing will be added unto us. The Lord bless you richly. Have a wonderful rest of the week. And please, please send your testimonies because I know indeed you shall be pleasantly surprised. God bless you. Thank you so much.